All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today we are actually going to be looking at a couple things. Um, we're going to be looking at what it means by true democracy, and then we're going to be looking at voting. Um, what does it take to vote and things like that and the significance of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the warm-up. All right, so here is your warm-up picture. Um, the first question asks you, um, which one of these you think is a real reason people actually go vote? Okay, uh, the top one says, I just wanted a sticker, so I voted. I'm sure you've seen those people on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, things like that. I got a lot of questions from students asking what a rage vote is. Rage vote is when you get angry at something, whether it's a politician, a law, or whatever, and that's the sole reason you're going to vote. It's not that, oh, I'm just my patriotic duty, or I want this sticker. It's more like, I don't like that politician. I don't like that person who's running for president, so I'm going to go vote for the other person so that person doesn't get elected. Same thing with the law. I'm going to go uh, vote against that law because I don't like it. It's stupid. I think we should get rid of that type of stuff. Okay. Um, another one, I cancel out your vote. Some people see it as, well, if my friends are, let's say, a Democrat, um, I'm going to vote Republican to cancel his vote out. You know, they see it as like a, you know, even match and who's basically going to have more. Okay. Um, another one, I voted to exercise my freedom, you know, just say, hey, this my, this is what I believe, that in this country we are, uh, it's a right, you know, to vote, so I'm going to ex exercise my right to vote. Um, or simply, I changed my mind. I used to think this way, I used to vote this way, and now I'm going to vote this way, and I'm going to make sure that my voice is heard, that this is what I believe the way our country should be going. Okay, so whichever one you think, forget about that one. The second question asks you, why do you think some people simply don't go vote? What are some possible reasons why people do not vote? Okay, so uh, pause the video if you're still writing. Okay, uh, but we're going to be moving on in three, two, one. So. When it comes to true democracy, there are five general criterias um, that reflects the quality of life of citizens in a democracy. Number one is active citizen participation, meaning the more citizens are involved in what the government's doing, the more likely that they're going to maintain a strong democracy. Because if the it's the people who keep the politicians honest, and if they don't care what the politicians say, they're going to just you know, the politicians are going to do what they want. Or if the people are not informed, they're going to be able to do what they want and say whatever they want because, again, the people are not going to know, the people are not going to know the difference. And, again, how can people get involved? Right there. Being informed on issues. You Before, I used to say this was a tough thing. Hey, be informed on what the issues are, things like that, what's happening. The bad thing about nowadays is that a lot of younger people especially listen to people on TikTok and think that they know it all, that this person is some sort of authority, you know, when in reality this person is just talking. They may not know what the heck they're talking about. They more than likely heard something from someone else and they're acting so passionate about it that it sounds like they know what they're talking about when in reality they have no idea what they're talking about they don't even look up the resources themselves they're just oh well, that sounds like what i believe so i'm gonna say it you know because what i believe is right you know and it's like no what you believe it's an opinion you know and you're just trying to find confirmation of your opinion and that sounds like facts when it may not be facts it might be, be miscued information, information that's taken facts and warped and changed to make it fit what they wanted to fit, their agendas. So be careful where you get your information, TikTok, 
YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, all that stuff. No, no. Be careful what you listen to because there are some real scientists. There are, are some people who know what they're talking about on there, but they get canceled out because there's so much people saying bad information. Another way, vote in the elections. Go vote. Make your voice heard. Okay. Another one, serve in juries. That's a big one. We're going to be coming back to um, jury duty and stuff like that um, later on when we talk about civic duties. Um, work for a candidate, you know, whether it's uh, federal, state, local. If you truly believe in a politician and what they're saying and what their goals are, help them out. Or even you run for political office, whether it's a councilman, assemblyman, mayor, governor, who knows, maybe even president. You never know. So that is active citizen participation. Okay. A favorable economy. This is where they're the larger middle class, the better the democracy will be. Okay. Um, People have control over their economic lives. That's what we call free enterprise. When they don't have to worry about living paycheck to paycheck. Okay. And going back to that first part, a lot of people think, well, I'm just saying a lot of people, but there's some people who believe, well, if there's a large rich people, then that means the country's doing good. Not necessarily, because if there's large amount of rich people, that means they're going to be a bigger, even huger part of poor people okay you have to think like this a lot of people who have wealth a lot of money they tend to not look at the price they just say yeah sure whatever you know so they wouldn't mind spending ten thousand dollars on a meal if they're a multi-millionaire you know they might not bat an eye on that um and that's ten thousand dollars going to one place, a dinner. Okay, are the workers getting them going to get paid five thousand dollars for that night? No, they're not. They're going to get paid very little. The waiters, the dishwashers, all those people are going to get paid very little. You know, they probably make more money off of tips than they do, you know, the hours they work. You know, that's the thing. That rich person spends all that money in one spot. Middle class people, however, they're going to go to places like Walmart, Target, things like that. They're going to buy Windex. They're going to buy toilet paper. They're going to buy, you know, uh, toys and things like that for their nieces, nephews, or even their own kids. And that is how the economy rolls. Because that money that they're spending is going to different places. And when it goes to this place, those people are giving the money to their workers. Same thing at this place. They're giving the money to the workers. And those workers are going to buy, you know, Windex and Common and things like that. And that keeps the economy going. Okay? So instead of spending a lot of money on one place, it's best to spread it out and about. Okay? The next thing is widespread education. Now, in class, I've mentioned, if anyone has seen the movie, The Idiocracy, or Idiocracy, however you pronounce it. Um, and that movie is about basically, in the future, um, the average person now, in the future, will be like the smartest person in the world. Because people get dumber and dumber and dumber. That's why this part is definitely very important in our country. Because the more successful um, our country is to be we need educated people to actually run it and get keep things going you know but if we start to decline you know the smartest person wouldn't really be that smart and that's pretty bad strong civil society this is represented by volunteer groups, uh, economic groups, religious groups, things like that. So let's say a disaster hits someplace like uh, New Orleans or Florida, things like that. FEMA, the 
Federal Emergency Response Team, they may take a while to get to that spot where they need the supplies, whether it's food or water or, you know, things like that, because they got to see, well, how much can we get? You know, uh, how long are we going to get? How are we going to get there? Are we going by plane? Are we going by trucks? Uh, how much do we take to this certain spot or this certain spot? Whereas a organization like the Red Cross can provide aid, can get food and water to these people within a day or two. And by the time the government gets everything, to all their you know, T's crossed and their I's dotted, by the time they get everything done, the Red Cross will already have an idea. Okay, this place needs water. This place needs food. This place needs um, some type of other assistance. Um, there are so many thousands of people dead. There are so many thousands of people um, missing. They they have that number. So by the time the government gets there, the government's in the know. They tell them, this is what we know. The government loves that. Because that tells that gives um, them some time to get things organized. Whereas the civilians, these organizations, they could just get there in a heartbeat. The last one should be the easiest one, but you're going to find out that it's actually kind of one of the hardest things for some people to do. And that is social conscious, uh, cons uh, consensus. Sorry, and a little mind slip. Um, this is when the people and citizens basically acknowledge you are a person equal to me. You have freedoms just like I do. And it doesn't matter if you're a man, woman, uh, whether you're white, black, or whatever. You acknowledge you are free. You have freedoms just like me. We are equal. And as some of you guys know, there are some people in this country who have trouble accepting that. They don't see this person who is maybe the opposite political party, who is the opposite color of me, who doesn't believe exactly what I believe. Um, then they have to be below me because they're not the same as me. Some people have really hard trouble accepting that, that, hey, even though we are different, we are all equal. We all have liberties. We all have freedoms. You know, but like I said, it's hard for some people to acknowledge that. So of the five general criteria, which one do you feel is the most important to our country and why? Active citizen participation, a favorable economy, widespread education, strong uh, civil society, or social consensus. Which one do you feel is the most important? Okay, if you have to go back and listen, go back and listen. Okay, um, but don't give very vague answers because those will not be, you won't be getting your points for that. Okay, so pause the video, write your responses, but we're moving on in three, two, all right, so now we come to elections. In a democracy, everyone's votes carry some weight. Now, you notice I put some. Because, yeah, your one vote probably won't decide on who's going to be president or, or not. Because there's so many millions of people voting. But, at the local level, your vote does matter. And I've given this example in class. And uh, it's like... There was an incident locally, I believe it was like in Kings County, uh, which is south of Fresno. Um, one proposal passed by three votes. Three votes. And in that area, there's thousands of people who live there. So you're going to tell me that if, let's say, 200 of them said, you know what? My vote don't matter. It don't count. If those 200 people were to vote, maybe the things would be different. Okay. The legal requirement to vote is kept at a minimum. Okay. Because they want you to vote. And it doesn't matter what race you are, your religion, your sex, doesn't matter at all. You cannot be denied the right to vote if, one, you're a citizen. Two, you're of, eight, you're of age, you have to be 18, and you have to register to vote, and that you've registered before the deadline, okay? 
Now, people, we, can vote freely by secret ballot. It's not like how it was in the 1920s with Al Capone in, in Chicago, where he had his goons standing over people, making sure that they voted a certain way. Or in some other parts of the country, where they intimidate people to vote a certain way. You don't have to worry about that here in this country. Okay? So we have that freedom to vote in secret if we want. All right, so here are some stats from the 2016 election. This was the one between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Now, if you look at the top number, this is the total registered voters. It's 249,422,000 people registered to vote. However, when the voting day came, only 136,787,187 actually voted okay that's a difference guys of 110 million people who didn't vote now why didn't they vote well i have those reasons right there um number one uh they didn't like the candidates they're like well i don't like hillary i don't like trump so i'm not just not going to vote at all so for every um uh, five people one person basically said that uh, the next one, a feeling that their vote wouldn't have made a difference. So again, those people, oh, my vote, my one vote won't elect, won't pick up who's the president. No, no, but if you have, you were and 25 million other people, you know, vote a certain way, that's going to change everything, you know. And the last one, being undecided on whom to vote for. This one to me is the one that don't make doesn't make any sense to me. How can you honestly be there and be like, well, I don't know who to vote for, Clinton or Trump, Clinton or Trump. Oh, I just don't know who to vote for, so I won't vote at all. Why won't you go vote? Which one do you feel uh, says and basically promises to do the things that you want, that you feel is right for our country, you know? Um, they don't know you personally. They, they, they could care less who you are. They just want your vote. You know, they're not going to say, oh, well, Tommy didn't vote for me. So, you know, I'm going to go after Tommy. No, they don't care. Another fun thing about the non-voters is if you look at the stats to the, to the right over here, uh, these look at the non-voters, the ones that are at 65 or older. That was about 10%. People who were 50 to 64, they made up 19%. Now, this is where it gets pretty like, wow. The people who were ages 30 to 49, 36% of the non-voters were in that age group. And from 18 to 29, it was 34%. So that should tell you something. The younger people, they tend not to vote. Older people, definitely. Okay. Now, here's another fun little um, fact from these stats. Postgraduate. These are people who are at the upper levels in their education. You know, doctors, masters, things like that. Um, they make up 5% of the people who decided not to vote. 5%. That's, that's very little. Um, college graduates. You know, people who got their bachelor's, associates, things like that. They make up 12%. People who have some college, they took courses, they have classes, they have certificates. They make up 28% of the non-voters. But staggering number, 54% of those non-voters were people who had a high school diploma or less. You know, so that should tell you something that the people who are highly educated realize that your vote does matter, that you should vote. Whereas the people with the lower education, they are like, well, what's the point? There's no point of me voting. You know, my voice won't be heard. Uh, this thing won't matter. I don't know who to vote for, you know. That type of thinking 
is just a way to cop out from actually voting, you know. And like I said, education-wise and age, you tend to realize, you know, it, it, there is a significance to my vote. It is important that I do register, that I do vote, okay. So here's question number two for you. Do you think that people who decide not to vote have a right to complain about how things are going politically, um, local policies, local taxes, or laws that are passed? Do you think they have a right to complain if they didn't vote? What do you think? Let me know. Okay. Um, so pause the video, write your response. Okay, but we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so here's the thing. When registering to vote, uh, you must complete the following things correctly. Um, you'd be surprised how many times people mess this up or get it wrong. The first thing is your legal name. Okay, they don't want to know your nickname. If your nick, if your real name isn't Geeky or something like that, you know, that's a nickname. But if that's a real, real legal name on your birth certificate, that's what you put down. You know, so you don't put like Lupe. If your birth name is Guadalupe, you know, you got to put down your real legal name, whatever's on your birth certificate. Um, you must provide uh, identification. So. Uh, whether it's your driver's license, your ID card, uh, even your social security number. Now, your social security number, guys, I'm going to say this again later on in other lessons. But you should never, ever carry it in your wallet or take a picture of it and keep it on your phone because you can lose your wallet. You can lose your phone and then somebody's going to find it and now they got your social security number uh, they can really mess up your credit, and who knows, maybe they may even use it to sell it so that um, my cousin Pepe can come from Mexico over here. You know, now he has a, a social security number, and it's yours. So we don't want that. I love my cousin Pepe, but he, he should be in Mexico. <laughs> okay? Uh, the other thing they need is your current address. Okay? Um, the other thing they'll ask you is, how do you want to vote? Do you want to vote by mail, or do you want to go show up on the day of the election? Okay, now, just because you decide to vote by mail, it doesn't mean you can't vote in person. Okay, basically you get your ballot in the mail, and you would have to take that to the voting place. And you can drop it off, you know, make your, make your, uh, decisions, stuff like that. They just have to mark you off, and there you go. Okay? The last piece of information they need, um, you don't necessarily have to answer, and that's which political party do you want to join? Excuse me. Um, so, you don't have to say, oh, I'm going to vote Republican. I want to be part of Democrat. I want to be Green Party, Tea Party, you know, Libertarian, you know, Independent. You don't have to choose right there and then. You can hold off on that. Or if you don't want to answer at all, you don't have to answer that. It's just when that they when you register, they want to let the Democratic Party know, hey, someone registered and they're Democrat. Or, hey, Republicans, a new person just registered and they're registering as Republicans. And so when elections come around, that's when they send you those leaflets. You know, hey, this, this Republican person is running for senator, you know, they want your vote, or these laws and bills are being proposed, this is how Republicans are voting for that, we would like for you to vote this way. Do you have to? No, absolutely not. Just because you are part of a, a political party doesn't mean you have to vote that way. You can vote any way you want. It's your choice. That's the beauty of voting. You choose what you feel is best, regardless if it's what your party 
the party you affiliate with says this is you should do or not do. You do what you feel is best. Do what you feel our country needs. That's how we keep our country running and thriving. Okay. So there's a website right there to register to vote here in California. Um, I've said this in class before and I'll say it again, continue to say it. If you want to register to vote and you don't know how, let me know. We'll set up a time. We'll set up everything. You can see myself, Mr. Sanchez, maybe even Mr. MacArthur. Let one of us know and we will help you out. We'll get things set up, computer and stuff like that, um, and then uh, let you register. Okay. All right. I thought I had an exit ticket, but I don't apparently. So <laughs> that's it for this class. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something new. Um, I will see you guys in class. All right. So adios.